experience the inner workings of a Ooh. expert intact. Okay, here's our wind turbine. Got some documentation, assembly instructions, and various boxes of electronics, which are optional. Here we have a battery charger controller which uh, takes the AC power from the wind turbine, converts it to DC to charge a battery. When the battery is fully charged, it will use these terminals to run a dump load. So you always make use of your power even if your batteries are charged. You can Typically this is run to a water heating element. Here we have, I think, another one of the same. Yep, we have a, the controllers from several wind turbines are in this box. I'm hoping that this is a grid tie inverter. Okay, and it is. This is a grid tie inverter, which also has a dump load, very similar to the one we reviewed on our website a couple months ago, but this one has a dump load, as I said, and it also has some microprocessor control inside of here, which after a power fault will, every few minutes, check to see if the situation is better and it can turn itself back on. And we have another one of those, another uh, voltage inverter in here, grid tie, and we have our wings, or blades as some people call them, for our turbine. And these are made out of extruded aluminum, which we'll see in a second. blades for the wind turbine and they're made of extruded aluminum which you will soon see they're very well packaged And these are very ruggedly made blades. Extruded aluminum. This is a 25 millimeter aluminum tube which goes down the center. And later these will go, these will be the three blades that move the wind turbine. That's our alternator and the uh, mount for the turbine. And this is designed so in, it's a little off center, so in strong winds the blade will automatically furl and we don't have to rely on external mechanical components for safety. It's a tried and true design. Now what do we have here? Okay, this is our tail, which is used to point the turbine into the wind. OEM Parts Express Wind Power Generator is the manufacturer. Doubles as a canoe paddle. <laughs> okay, and then here we have some uh, J bolts. These are used to secure the turbine base, which I'm going to show you in a minute, which was in a separate container, to a uh, concrete. So you actually submerge these in concrete, bolt the base on there. I'm not going to open those up, but I think you can see with simple J bolts.
And there's uh, some hardware, which we'll find out what to do with later. Oh, one and of a bridge rectifier. Right. And here is our uh, commutators, which uh, these allow the electricity to travel from the turbine downward, even when the turbine's rotating. These are made out of uh, Delrin and, and uh, steel. And that's all that's in this box. Now I'm going to get you a turbine base. This is a heavy duty turbine base with 9 millimeter thick steel and 6 millimeter thick up here. Okay, the poles for the tower are wrapped in burlap. So we're going to remove the burlap and see what we got here. Okay. Nice looking uh, tower there. Does it remind you of anything with Boris Karloff in it? <laughs> okay. Each of these are about two meters long, I believe. For a total height that's going to reach six meters or approximately 20 feet, a little shy of 20 feet. Which is not a giant tower, but uh, it's going to make it nice for our application. All right. Okay, folks, this is our modified base. We just took a standard base for the OEM wind turbine and bolted some steel to the bottom of it. This is going to enable us to have a portable wind turbine that we can hold down with the weight of a motor vehicle. The first thing we have to do is find some level ground to put this on. As you can see, our ground is covered with snow, so we're going to shovel down to the depth of the driveway and uh, try to get a level area ground to put this thing at least the shovel. We've hit pay dirt. Alright. The next thing we need to do is make sure this is level and we've done that. It's pretty level. Check it two directions. And if it's level before you drive the vehicle on it, it'll probably be level after you drive the vehicle on it, unless you're on very soft ground. Okay, now we're going to lay out the three sections of the tower right about where they're going to be laying on the ground. The middle piece is flanged on both sides. That's how you can tell it when they're all piled in a pile. It's the only piece that has flanges on both sides. The bottom only has a flange on the top. And then the smallest diameter piece over here which is the uh, top piece, only has a flange in the bottom. And then the wind turbine itself is going to ride on the top. And try not to do what I do and get these filled up with snow. Because their next step is we're going to be running wires through these. Okay, now I am feeding the wire into each section of tower. Okay, we got two of the three posts now wired. I thought we might need a fish tape to get this through here, but it goes very easily. Only problem we had was we had to clear some snow out in one instance. And there she is all the way through. Okay. Now we're going to 
secure the commutator ring and then bolt all these sections together. Okay, here we have our poles laid out. We got the wires through them. We have the lowest pole connected to the base. And our next step is to put the commutator on the well, you end. You know what, we'll just take the other one. Okay. Now what we are doing is attaching the commutator to the highest section of tower so it will not rotate and then the wire won't get twisted and there's a plastic covering on this keep the covering on until you're just ready to install the wind turbine on the top of the tower Yeah. you're on oh another screw is placed in the back and that takes care of that. You want to put these in loosely the first time you're putting them in and then drive them home once you get all six in for each section. Okay, we put a log over here to uh, hold the side of the tower up so we can get to all the nuts and bolts here. There's six nuts and bolts per section. And I think that's pretty good there. Just want to snug these down then turn them an extra corner turn when, once they're snug. We're going to put six more nuts and bolts in here, but three of these are going to have little attachments on them and those attachments can be used optionally if you want to guide us pull. Uh, some zoning re requirements might want you to guide your pull. So we're going to put those in now even though we're not going to use them right away. And here's one of the one of the tabs that attaches to guy wire. Right there. These required 14 millimeter tools. Okay, now we're going to take her back down and put the actual wind turbine onto the top of the tower. We put a wheel barrel over here so we can uh, work on the turbine with the tower up in the air. Okay, now we're going to put the actual turbine head onto the tower, like so, and then hand tighten these three screws to position it. And later we'll use a hex socket to a hex headed screwdriver to tighten that up a little. And this needs to be able to rotate when the wind changes directions. Now we're attaching the tail. And for this you need a 13 millimeter wrench and a large um, hex. Six millimeter hex head. Sometimes called an Allen wrench. And these are, make sure you do this right the first time, because these are nylocks, so they're very hard to get off once you get them on.
good thing is they won't come off by accident. You want to just drive those home and turn them a little bit more once they drive home. Don't want to compress the, the steel pole. Now we're pole. putting on the blades, which use the same kind of hardware for the tail. But the manual states that you have to tighten these really well because this is the part that spins. The other thing is the curve here. See which way this airfoil is curved? That has to point towards the, the tail, which is uh, not what I would have guessed. Now I'm giving this the final tightening of all the blades just to make sure they don't go flying off because we don't want anybody to suffer a personal injury and we don't want to have to deal with personal injury lawyers. Okay, we, we have the uh, wind turbine and tower attached to our base held down by our truck. We did it on a day without wind which is what it says to do in the manual and uh, Next, we're going to hook up our electronics and get ready for when the wind comes. And I'm going to hide the keys to the truck so my son doesn't hop in and take off without noticing this thing is here. not blowing now but it's probably going to be blowing later so we're setting up the uh, grid tie inverter here and we're going to run a cord into the house going to keep it in the truck instead of putting it in a box for now just to get things going and keep it out of the snow and rain so the here's the connection to the wind turbine your connection to the wall is a standard 110 socket there we're going to plug a cable into and then we still need to decide what we're going to use for dump load but I don't think we're going to have to worry about that right now